Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 528, we're going to talk about Heartless Hitsugu. Hitsugu is the last deck that I had ready. I'd already had it listed and numbered um, when Theros Beyond Death hit my hands, you know. So, after this, it will be straight uh, <laughs> Theros for a while recording a bunch today so we're gonna start with heartless hitsugu now for five mana from betrayers of kamikawa we get a four three which ogre shaman none of that really matters what we're playing hitsugu for is he taps to half everybody's life total now the wording on it is beautiful he deals to each player damage equal to that player's half of their life total so he actually deals the damage it's not life loss or anything so there are a few cards that just automatically pop right into my head um number one stuff to untap it like um umbral mantle so you can do it multiple times in a turn so there's umbral mantle thorn bite staff um the biggie though is probably locks it on warhammer because it grants lifelink uh, this way you gain the life that he deals, which is a ton of damage. Now, the gratuitous violence. Okay, first off, this is a very, very risky deck. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It is risky. Simply because you can kill yourself. If, you, you know, if you're not careful, if you don't watch out, you can just throw it under the bus. So... A gratuitous violence is going to double the damage that he deals. Now it's to everyone. So it's pretty much going to deal damage to everyone equal to their life total. So you've got to have a way to, uh, uh, like the Loxodon Warhammer, gain that life back or to reduce damage to you somehow by like an Urza's armor. Um, it's... It's a relatively large target, so Whisper Silk Cloak is giving it Shroud. I, we're not attacking. Don't even want to... Uh, I mean, there's a few creatures in here that you'll see, but by and large, it's, uh, it's all about his ability. Now, if we're lucky enough to get like the Glacial Chasm in play, hey, we are living the dream. We can't take damage now, and we're just going to tap Hitsugu over and over again. That way, the things like the Furnace of Wrath, the Dictator Twin Gods, and the Quest of the Pure Flame, double, double, double. So, I guess, though, we need to look at... There's no secret. Once uh, you look across the field and, and they see Hitsugu as our commander... Uh, it's not really a hidden strategy, you know. Everybody knows what we're up to. So let's look at some mana ramp to try to make this happen a little quick. And by mana ramp, uh, I mean that in probably the loosest way possible. <laughs> um, we have some artifacts. Of course, the pristine talisman uh Seer's Lantern, Mana Geode, because it makes the red, Magnifying Glass, Meteorite is a mana rock with a shock attached to it, I mean it should be, it costs 5, right? And the red mana battery, because I like old cards, that's why. <laughs> um, got a few creatures, Walking Atlas, going to help us dump more lands, accelerate a little quicker, the Hedron Crawler, Iron Mirror, Opal and Unicorn, because it does give us that red. Simeon Spirit God, probably just going to pitch it. Pyretic Ritual, and most importantly, the mother of all red rituals in Commander, Mana Geyser. Could say Mama Geyser. But, uh, and a little bit of card draw. Now, red's card draw, historically, is, you know... Stuff like Tormenting Voice. We get uh, draw and discard in red. Or actually discard and then draw. 
So, with that in mind, before we go through any more, let's look at Bag of Holding. Uh, we can get those cards back. And the bag itself is its own draw discard. So, uh, wow. Return all cards exiled with Bag of Holding to their hand. So, that's that's not bad with, with stuff like Thrill of Possibility, Wild Yes, Cathartic Reunion. Even Smuggler's Copter. Uh, I mean, so the rest of, of the draw, of, of course, the Ore is going to help everybody, but we're mono red. We're probably playing on a lot of stuff quickly. Uh, the Seer Sundial. And the Sandstone Oracle here. I'm, oh man, this is card draw. Now, granted, this is probably the most amazing card draw in a white blink deck, but. I figure when we get to the seven mana to cast this, we're probably not going to have that many cards in hand anyway. So, uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Let's look at some good old-fashioned good stuff. Oh, oh, War Elemental. Here's a card don't see a, a lot of love, but it's perfect in this deck, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to sack it, and you, you know, unless an opponent was dealt damage this turn. But whenever damage is dealt to an opponent, put that many 1-1 counters on it. This is just funny, because if you have everybody's life total, whoa, <laughs> right? Let's go down this line of thinking, right? Pyrohemia. Because I was like, well, I need something more to the deck besides just, hey, we're going to have everybody's life total. Because, you know, people are going <laughs> to, people going to come for you. So, Pyrohemia, it's the red pestilence, card for card, or word for word, rather. Uh, so, but the problem is, you need a creature in play that won't die to keep Pyrohemia around. And that's where Stuffy Doll comes in. So, Stuffy Doll, you know, it's beautiful. We, uh... <laughs> All of the Stuffy Doll shenanigans. Uh, you know, there's this one. There is uh, Wildfire. It's going to deal four damage to everybody, and they sack four lands. Hence, another reason why we have all that artifact ramp. So, you know, trying to keep everybody on the back foot while we're assembling our uh, uh, tap to kill combo if you will now skull crack and tibalt are there just so nobody can gain life i didn't dedicate more than two slots to it because to be honest with you it's not that big of a deal um because if if you're tapping him to deal half half damage and that's doubled it don't matter what their life is at it does it doesn't so um, let's look at some burn, shall we? We have a pretty good selection of burn. Um, no lightning bolt, though, just mainly because they're all spoken for now. But Hitsugu's second right was kind of one that had to be in there. Now, this was... The original thing that they gave us was you play Hitsugu half their life the next turn, and then you second ride them to finish them off. But... Just people randomly being at 10 life works. Oh, and by the way, <coughs> this card's amazing in, in decks where you run the Soren that sets somebody's life to 10. Because that's red, black. That's just two cards, uh, two colors. And, and that's a really, really easy thing to pull off. Now, you can do it in like a four color deck with the Sphinx, but that's a little more difficult. Because the F Sphinx also sets somebody's life to. 10. So let's look at our good old fashioned burn here, shall we? Which that's all it is, is good old fashioned burn. Skewer the Critics, Magma Spray, Incinerate, Shock, Lava Spike, Rift Bolt, Browbeat. Okay, let's talk about Browbeat. Yes, this card is terrible in Commander. However, This card is going to take advantage of the fact that people know what we're doing. They know exactly what we're doing. 
we are we're coming after your life total. We're doubling damage and doubling damage and halving life. And yeah, it goes in turn order after you cast it. Everybody gets a, a, a chance to have it deal five. But you know what? In this deck, I would almost rather them deal the take the five or ten or whatever as opposed to me drawing the cards. But either way, in this particular deck, it's win-win. Uh, mana barbs, you know, it's making it more difficult to, uh, to cast spells. And Imminent Doom. Now, let's read Imminent Doom here, shall we? Oh, oh you get to see a sneak peek of 533, don't you? Actually, more, there's a bunch there. Um, Imminent Doom enters the battlefield with a Doom counter on it. Okay. Whenever you cast a spell with the converted mana cost equal number of Doom counters, so one, that's to start off with. It deals that much damage to our creature or player, then put a Doom counter on it. So, hence the reason why the damage spells. Now, uh, let's look at some power here. Uh, for you say, it dealt damage to each creature without flying, so I kind of kind of put this at a board wipe kind of thing. Um, Thranlands, just in case there's a, a, you know, I mean, circles of protection do exist, okay? These cards exist. Nobody plays them. I'm expecting them to get a little more popular with all of the enchantment things, but to be honest with you, they hadn't been printed in so long, a lot of people don't even realize they exist. So, but anyway. Smoke. Untap more than one. That's all I care about is untapping one creature, right? Uh, flame Break. Three damage to each creature without flying and each player. Of course, Pyroclasm does a similar thing. Um, smash. Uh, we're paying the extra mana for that draw card over like Shatter, you know. Uh, Scour from Existence is a great card. Just exile that thing. Uh, by Force. Flowstone Slide. Fissure. Now, I remember making fun of this card when I was, uh, you know, back then. Uh, especially once Alliances came out and we had, like, uh, Pillage. But I think it's actually overlooked now because Fissure... Yes, it is a five mana instant. Destroy target, land, or creature without possibility of regeneration. That's what buried means. So, just destroy target creature. Red does not have a lot of that. It has deal damage. It has lots of things. But not destroy target creature. Uh, we have Tectonic Hellion, you know. A5, okay, and it really punishes that ramp player. We have Dracuseth, donated by Clay. Thank you, Clay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, four damage to a target and three damage to each of up to other two targets. Now, this is also excellent with gratuitous violence. Yeah, right? Uh, and then, you know, our, our last non-land card, if uh, <laughs> if all other strategies fail, we just spend eight mana and win the game, right? Insurrection. Now, there are multiple strategies behind the insurrection, but obviously you, you know, steal everything and kill whoever has, has the biggest threat and you, you leave the person that doesn't have as much of a board stick. Anyway, uh, that brings us to our lands, which is Dormant Volcano, Majoring Network, so we can kind of store up mana, Emergence Zone, because sometimes we got to have the flash. And our last card is Safe Haven. Now, Safe Haven, man, I can't believe how tiny they wrote that. Uh, Safe Haven... 
No, closer's not the answer. Further's the answer. Um, the reason why I've got safe haven in here is that way we can save some of our creatures when it comes to one of our, our board wipes or global damage dealers or stuff like that. So That's Hitasugu. Uh, that's uh, all we wrote for that one. You can tell I've been working on, on that deck a while. It's in the cheeseburger sleeves. I haven't used those in a long time. Has it been a, a couple years? So, the the Pinnacle Red deck, yes, that's right. I'm wearing Batman footy pajamas. I'm a grown man. <laughs> uh, Artless Hitsuku 528 is done. We'll put him on the wall. Like I said, we have got... Uh, this is recording day for me. Uh, so you're going to see the footy pajamas for a while. <laughs> I have been building decks since Theros Beyond Death came out. I have eight complete. Um, obviously, I, I've got the table over there where the other million are in the process of being built. Uh, thanks, Wizards. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I joke, but... I love the challenge. I do. Um, I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. But right now, we're going to shuffle and cut. <laughs>